In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to create a loose portrait sketch with charcoal. We'll be working with several forms of charcoal, including vine charcoal, which is soft and powdery. We'll also use compressed charcoal in a compressed charcoal pencil, which is much darker but harder to erase. We'll use a blending stump to smooth transitions of value, and we'll also use white charcoal to hide highlights and create transitions of value. And we'll also use a kneaded eraser to lift the charcoal from the surface. We'll begin by lightly sketching out the overall form of our portrait using the vine charcoal. I'm working on Canson Mitons paper and I'm using a blue-gray toned surface. I'm working on the less textured side of the paper. We'll begin here by just lightly sketching out lines. The most dominant line that I'm looking for at this step is the brow line. We'll also draw a shape for the nose and loosely define the edges or contours of the face. We're drawing very loosely and quickly here. I'm trying to keep my arm moving with every mark that I make. Now we'll move on to looking at some of the darker values that exist. I'm just going to block in these areas of darker value initially. Working with charcoal is a lot like working with clay. We might start with a big lump of clay, and the more that we work it, the more detail we create. The same thing's true with the charcoal, as I mentioned. We can start very, very loosely and just get some tones on the surface. And as we work, we can gradually get more detailed with our applications. Periodically, I will use my finger to smudge some of the material, creating a lighter value. This is a loose portrait sketch. So I'm concentrating on modeling the form initially. I'm not concerned with drawing all of the facial features right from the start. I just want to get a good idea of the light source and the overall three-dimensional qualities of the head. We'll develop this portrait through several layered applications. With each application, we can gently blend with the finger, working the material into the surface. Gradually, we'll develop a full range of value, and eventually, we'll start to define some of the details further. It's almost like we're trying to find all the areas of dark value and light value in order to model the three-dimensional qualities of the head. This portrait sketch is very loose, so we don't have to get obsessed with accuracy at this point. Of course, we're attempting to be as accurate as possible, but we don't have to get obsessed with all of the details that we're seeing at this point. Again, we're only concerned with relationships between dark and light locations. The darkest locations on the face most likely will occur in the areas around the eyes, underneath the nose, on the upper lip, and just underneath the chin and the neck. This is because most of the times the light source is going to originate from above the subject as we see here. In this case, there are two light sources. There's a dominant light source coming from the right, the upper right corner, and there's a less dominant light source originating from the upper left hand corner. This, of course, is going to produce areas of darker value where we would expect them. As I mentioned, around the eyes, underneath the nose, on the top lip, and underneath the neck and chin. Of course, we're still working with the vine charcoal at this stage. One of the wonderful things about vine charcoal is it allows us to make changes relatively quickly and easily. We're putting information on the paper in, in terms of the values that we see, but of course these bits of information will need to be altered throughout the process. So we can put some of the material on the surface and we can alter it relatively quickly using our finger or a kneaded eraser. This will allow us to almost pull the portrait from the surface of the paper as we work. As we become more confident with the details, we can allow the marks to sit. Some folks find vine charcoal difficult to work with, and I think a big reason for this is because they try to use vine charcoal as they would a traditional drawing pencil, where they're trying to define the edges and lines right from the start. Really, a better approach is to concentrate on the value relationships as we're doing here. Allow those values to be smudged as they're applied, and gradually will create a full range of value. It's almost like you're painting with the powder from the vine charcoal. When we think of using vine charcoal in this manner, we can truly appreciate the unique qualities of the medium. It produces marks that are hard to replicate with a graphite pencil, and we can also create those relationships between values relatively quickly and alter them quickly as well. As we continue the process of developing the relationships between the dark and light values, we can allow the details of the face to slowly emerge from the surface of the paper. 
This process of working dark and light values back and forth is sometimes referred to as pushing and pulling. Because we are pushing the values darker or pulling some of the values out, we can create this range of value that will ultimately lead to the illusion of form. With each layer of the vine charcoal, we can progressively get darker and define some of the edges further. You'll notice that I didn't draw an outline around the outside portion of the head, or where the hair is. Instead, I'm concentrating on creating a contrast of value in this location to define the edges. A mistake a lot of beginners make is drawing these outlines, when in actuality, these outlines don't exist. Instead, we just see a contrast in value. We'll pull these darker values all the way around, and as we go, we'll define the edges of the face. Now, since we're working on a toned blue-gray surface, we'll need to use white charcoal to create some of the highlights. But before we do, we can go back in with a kneaded eraser and quickly and loosely erase some of the stronger areas of highlight that we observe. This will allow us to make marks with a white charcoal pencil directly to the surface of the paper, increasing the intensity of the marks that we do make. We'll look for areas where the light is hitting the strongest, of course, and we'll use the tip of the kneaded eraser to lift the charcoal from the surface. Since we're still using the vine charcoal, or since we've used the vine charcoal at this stage, lifting the material from the surface is very, very easy. We can also manipulate the shape of the tip of the kneaded eraser because the kneaded eraser is easy to mold into different shapes. So you can create a variety of different marks as you're actually erasing. In many cases, the eraser should not be used just as a tool for fixing mistakes. It should be thought of as a mark making tool as we're using it in this case. To ease transitions between the lighter values that we've created with the kneaded eraser and the darker values that we applied with the vine charcoal, we can use our finger to gently blend. And after we've erased out a few areas, we can return with the vine charcoal and make some areas a bit darker. Again, we're just continuing the process of pushing and pulling the darker and lighter values. This means we may go back and forth between erasing areas out and adding areas of darker value with the charcoal. In most cases, when you're drawing a portrait, the areas that protrude will be lighter in value and the areas that recede will be darker in value. Earlier, we talked about the areas where you're most likely to find darker values around the eyes, underneath the nose, on the top lip, and underneath the chin. The areas where you're most likely to find lighter values are in the areas of the cheekbones, the forehead, the bridge of the nose, and on the bottom lip and chin. Now we're ready to start working some of the lighter values and highlights. We'll use a stick of white charcoal to do this initially. We're just, again, looking for broad areas of lighter value. Now you might be wondering, why don't we just allow the areas that we've erased out to act as the highlights? Well, the reason is because the paper we're working on, again, is toned blue-gray paper. This means the lightest value possible is the actual tone of the paper, which is not a light value. It's a middle value. That's why we're adding the lighter values with the white charcoal. Just as we started with the vine charcoal, we'll create broad strokes with the white charcoal pencil. And as we go, we can use our finger to work the material into the surface. Here again, we haven't started the process of really refining the details. We'll do that in a moment with a charcoal pencil and a white charcoal pencil. But for the time being, we're just concentrating on the broader areas of light value. This essentially is just a continuation of the process of pushing and pulling dark and light values, continuing to build that relationship so that we model the form of the face and head. Through each layer that we add and blend and smudge into the surface, we're creating a bit more complexity in the value relationships and the value range. And throughout the process, we can continue to alter things as we see fit. In this case, I'm altering the upper left-hand portion of the forehead. Now we're ready to start refining and defining some of the details. We'll switch over to the compressed charcoal pencil to do so. We'll start in the areas of the eyes. Again, looking at the areas of detail at this point. Since we have a good amount of information between the value relationships of dark and light, we can add these details with confidence. 
The charcoal found in the charcoal pencil is compressed charcoal. Compressed charcoal is much darker than Von charcoal and a little bit more difficult to alter. As we continue refining the details, we'll switch back and forth between the black compressed charcoal and the white compressed charcoal. Details of lighter value and highlight, of course, are addressed with the white charcoal pencil, while areas of shadow and darker values are addressed with the black compressed charcoal. Just because we're using a more precise tool here doesn't mean that we can't continue to refine the value relationships that happen in the areas of the skin. With light applications with the white charcoal pencil, we can gradually make some of the values a bit lighter and create smoother transitions by blending with our finger. We can also alter details. In this case, I'm altering the shape of the left eye in this case using the white charcoal pencil. Because the charcoal in both pencils is compressed, the marks made with these pencils are more intense. This will further broaden the range of value that we create. We can create areas of really intense highlight with the white charcoal pencil and areas of intense shadow with the black charcoal pencil. Now we can take our blending stomp and do a bit more refined blending. Of course, our fingers are usually too large to blend in areas of detail, but the blending stomp allows us to go in and create smooth transitions of value in smaller areas. Of course, as we blend these sections, we'll consider the directional strokes that we make with the blending stomp. These strokes should flow in the same direction as the marks we made with the charcoal. We'll simply continue this process in all areas around the face, looking at areas on our subject where the value gets lighter and making marks that flow in the direction of the cross contours and then blending with the blending stomp. We can continue to progressively make the darker values a bit darker with the compressed charcoal. And make the lighter values progressively lighter with the white charcoal pencil. Now let's refine the edges further and create a bit more contrast with the background. We'll do this with the black compressed charcoal. At this point, we can really refine the edges of the subject without using any outlines. We can use our finger then to blend the applications of the compressed charcoal into the surface. And now our quick portrait sketch with charcoal is complete. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn even more about drawing and painting, I encourage you to check out our comprehensive membership program, which includes video courses, live lessons, ebooks, lesson plans, and much, much more. Just click on the button in the center of your screen to learn more or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. Thank you so much for watching.